But let's move on. Let's talk the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets are in a weird spot because I guess we don't know what's happening with Kyrie because we never know what's happening with Kyrie Irving. He has a $36 million player option. Uh, there are a number of different avenues he could kind of go. Like they could look at an extension. He can decline the player option and they can offer him like five years, $250 million. Like what the fuck do you do with Kyrie Irving? Do you just offer it and like pray that this goes well? I, honestly, I have no idea. My, I think my, you, they're like backed into a corner where like they almost have to retain him in some oh, way. It's just like, they what is don't, the number? They don't almost have to retain him. I don't know what the number is going to be, but they don't almost have to retain him. They do have to retain him. That's why I like, all right, my my strongest Nets take is if you aren't willing to bring Kyrie back because of all of the stuff that happened this past season and because you worry about what Kyrie the person, having Kyrie the person around your team might do to the rest of the team, and that makes you not willing to bring Kyrie back, then why in the world were you so unwilling to trade him this season when everyone yeah. who watched your team knew that you weren't going to be a title contender? Like you were you were completely, they got off to a good start without him and they were completely falling off for the whole season. The defense was a huge problem. Uh, they, they, they did not, they were the seven seed no one wanted to play except like, I mean, I guess teams tried to avoid them, Milwaukee and, and, and Boston and, and those teams were all trying to, you know, avoid them in the first round. And, and they were shuffling around trying to avoid Brooklyn, but like Brooklyn should have been able to self-identify like we're not, we don't have the defense to be a title team and we we have the offensive talent, but not necessarily yeah, at the top, but not necessarily the compliments. And there were just so many flaws. Like, why would you be so stringently unwilling to trade him in February and yet come the off season, just be willing to let him walk? I, I, I maybe the answer yeah, is that nobody I, I wanted to trade going for him. to. Exactly. Well, I think it's I you think it's more that they're back. just not going to let him walk. Yeah. So so let's assume that they bring Kyrie back. Let's assume it's an enormous number, and they're a tax team still. So they have all of the uh, typical avenues that a tax team has. What free agents, if you're Brooklyn, do you look to bring back out of Nick Claxton, Bruce Brown? You know, any of the veterans, Blake Griffin, LaMarcus Aldridge, etc. cetera. Um, who are you looking to bring back out of that group? Are you willing to pay the number to bring back Nick Claxton and Bruce Brown, given that those numbers might be a little bit bigger than what you were paying them previously? Well, you better be because they don't really have players. Like they have, they have so many guys who are up. Like they have, they have what, yeah. six guys on their roster, not including Kyrie? Something like that. Uh, six or seven. Yeah. It's not seven many. guys. They have, they have very few guys. So, so you better be willing to pay to bring those guys back because unless you can convince a few veterans who, who think they have a chance to win a title with you to come on for the minimum or something like that, or you can swing an excellent trade or something like that. You don't really have resources beyond the tax level. You got the tax pyramid level. You got minimum the minimum contract guys and that's about it so are you going to do better than bruce brown are you going to do better than nick claxton uh i think probably not bruce brown is a good player who can help you win and and claxton i think is a is a nice rim diving finishing shot blocking center who can who can who can help you especially during the regular season um there are some guys who who I feel like I don't know. I maybe they can convince a cheap vet or two to come and hey, come play with Kevin Durant and Kyrie and Ben Simmons and and help us win a title. Like PJ Tucker has a player option. I don't know what he's gonna do. You think he picks that up? It's like seven million. I, do. I don't know what he's gonna um, do. But it, like, look, he's gonna be able to get more from Miami than he is from Brooklyn at seven. Million. Yeah, I mean, look, Brooklyn Brooklyn's seven. So right, Brooklyn, Brooklyn's cases come come win with us. Like 
I think Kyle Anderson is too expensive for them. Uh, I think like they have to go defense with the guys who they bring in. That's, that's really the thing. Like the defense is a huge problem. Uh, Okay. Another, another baseball analogy for you. Uh, We're going nuts here. Let's do it. All right. The team in New York with the most players between six, five and six, eight is the Knicks. The team in New York with the second most players between 6'5 and 6'8 is not the Nets. It's the Yankees. That's a problem. Oh it should be the Nets. <laughs> that, Feels like it should probably be the Nets. <laughs> they they just don't have any wings. Like uh, yeah. beyond Kevin Durant. Like they just they don't have wings who can step up and guard big wings, which is why I mentioned like a PJ Tucker type, like just someone who can go guard a big wing can guard somebody on the perimeter. Like maybe they just sign Aaron judge. Maybe that's the move. So you can get a six, seven guy on your team. Uh, You know, I I wonder if they just like take some swings at like, Oh, maybe just take like a small swing on Derek Jones, Jr. Who has done well in like a small ball five roll. And he's he's fallen off. He's he's not what like Portland was when they gave him that that big contract. But just like that's not going to move the needle. But if you put Derek Jones Jr. with really good players, you know he might look a lot better because he can he can cut and he's athletic as hell and he can guard. And, uh, you know maybe you just make some swings like that and bring in energy guys and 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 you hope it works. And then you hope that Ben Simmons can come out and just look like Ben Simmons. So, so they have, they've, I think nine guys on the roster looking at their roster. Now Um, they have Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and assuming that Kyrie is there, right? Like let's, right. I wasn't counting Kyrie. Okay. Yeah. So let's assume Kyrie is there for the time being, right? Uh, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons, they have Joe Harris. That's four. Seth Curry is five. Patty Mills is six. Cam Thomas, Dayron Sharp, Kessler Edwards is nine. So, well, Mills, Mills has the player option. And I assume he probably picks that up given the way that he finished last season, right? That would make sense to you. I wouldn't be surprised if we picked it up. I just, I, I don't, I couldn't say for sure what he's going to do. They I think if he hits the have, market, he probably gets like the same contract, to be honest. They also have a couple of $11 million trade exceptions, which is somewhat interesting. They have the $11 million one from the Spencer Dinwiddie trade uh, last July. They have another $11 million one that they created in the James Harden deal. So I wonder if they can utilize one of those, maybe. I don't think they use both just because that roster gets exorbitantly expensive otherwise. But they have those two. They have the mid-level. They have some resources to be able to go out and get guys. It's just trying to find the guy that makes sense for them, I think, is very difficult because it basically has to be someone who is a good defender who has a reasonable chance to shoot it. A guy that like kind of popped to me a little bit. If you decide you don't want to pay Nick Claxton $11 million a year, right? Could you get Mo Bamba for six and try him as like a floor spacing big uh, that can protect the rim and you can utilize him that way. But the problem is, I would rather retain Nick Claxton and then be able to use the mid-level on a Mo Bamba, right? Or on someone else, I'm sorry, not on Mo Bamba, um, because that just makes more sense to me. But, I mean, if, if you decide you don't want to give Claxton that kind of money, I wonder if that's one that like is an interesting upside flyer with a position that they need. I like the Mo Bamba fit. With Ben Simmons out there, I mean, you're obviously going to have shooting if you have Kyrie and you have Joe Harris and you have Kevin Durant, but having two just like paint dwellers, a paint dweller with Ben Simmons makes it tough. So I like that fit. The problem is Mo Bamba is restricted. And if I'm Orlando and somebody offers Mo Bamba six million a year, first of all, you you don't really see like an offer sheet at six million a year. They probably have to turn that into a sign and trade to entice Orlando just to rescind his qualifying offer in that case kind of like we've seen with a bunch of other restricted free agents in the past but like 
that would be tough because now all of a sudden mm. uh, they're hard capped. And now you, they, that team is, I haven't done the math on it, but that would, they got to be real closer over the apron because they have such an expensive contract. So that's really t- or real, such an expensive salary, team salary. So, so that's really difficult too. And if I'm Orlando, it's the Mo Bamba is 6 million. I'm just, I'm just matching it. It's a guy who I drafted in the top 10 only a few years ago and he had a nice year last year. I just, yeah. I'd be happy to bring back Mo Bamba for that price. I've just kind of assumed that they're not going to offer him a $10 million qualifying offer because then Bamba is going to take the qualifying offer. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe that's what happens. Cause that like, that's, that's what Mo Bamba should do, but Mo Bamba probably wants to like have a real like starting role next year as well. Right. Yeah. You might be right. Like maybe, I mean, he was, maybe he was good. It's going to be like, a last year. yeah, that's going to be like a real game of chicken there. Like, cause I, I don't know that, Maybe that is it. Maybe it is just like a $10 million qualifying offer deal with Bamba. And like that ends up being what he does next year. Maybe I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate paying Mo Bamba $10 million for one year. That'd be fine. He's he blocked shots last year. He shot, what did he shoot from three 38? Like he, Mo Bamba does. He, he did stuff last year. He was, he was good. He, I thought he played the best basketball of his life by far. Well, yeah, and they can't get hard caps, so they can't bring him in the sign and trade either. So yeah, that might not work actually. Man, I'm trying to I'm trying to ideate here. It's and really it's tough to because it. the free the free agent market is just lackluster. It's not great, and they're probably going to want some actual like dudes essentially. Um, man, this is this is hard. It's a, it's actually a difficult concept to try and find guys that make sense for them. Uh, because you have well, that's to find why guys it comes it comes back to end. right. It comes back to like they're they're probably gonna feel like they have to bring back their guys, right? Yeah, they probably do. This is as good yeah. of a case as any for them. Yeah, to bring I back mean, Bruce Brown the thing with their trade team. exception too that's worth that's worth noting is the reason they have that Spencer Dimity trade exception is because they they didn't really want to take anybody back in the Spencer Dimity sign in trade. And the reason they didn't want to take anybody back was because the roster was so expensive that just like they were like four X into the tax. So every dollar they took on, they had to pay an extra four dollars in tax dollars. So just bringing back like, you know, uh, you know, uh, Montrez Harrell and his nine million dollar salary in the deal would have been like a forty five million dollar expense. And if they were not willing to pay that many tax dollars in a season when they thought they were by far the favorites to win the title. I'm just, I'm, I don't know the answer to this, but I wonder how willing they are going to be to pay tax dollars, uh, you know, at an extreme rate in a season where they're coming off as the seventh seed. Yeah, no, I agree with you there. Uh, man, they just need to find defensive identity. That's it, man. Like that, that, that's what they got to find. They have to find a defensive identity. Maybe Ben Simmons brings it. Maybe it's like Ben Simmons and, Kevin Durant, you find like a true big to play with those guys during the regular season. And then you close playoff lineups with Kevin Durant and Ben Simmons. Uh, I don't know. It feels tricky to me though. Yeah. I mean, look, Ben Simmons was one of the two or three best defenders in the league two years ago. So that's, that's a, uh, he can change a defense completely on his own. He's one of the very few guys in the league who can change a defense completely on his own, you know? So yeah, yeah maybe we're just, dis- I mean, we haven't really discussed that their number one acquisition next year is Ben Simmons. Yeah. That's totally. the guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? He's going to be hopefully good. Like we, we hope Ben will be good. Uh, I don't know. Brooklyn's in a weird spot.